slapper gear that I have. And believe me, I have some of gear <laughs> for some crazy I do. <laughs> welcome if you're watching online. Let's welcome onto the Eurovision press conference podium, the United Kingdom. Electro swing is what I keep reading over and over again. That's a new thing or a, a, a rare thing at Eurovision. What else makes your song perhaps a little different from what we might expect from a Eurovision song? Um, I think it's it just it, for this year. I feel that it's really fitting because it's the 60th year. It's a party year, and I think that we're bringing quite a party song with a party vibe, so... With a little retro taste. Yeah. 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 I like it. Okay. Okay, any questions uh, from my colleagues in the press corps? Um, I'll start out with uh, the gentleman way at the back. Somebody's got right behind you. Hello. Hello. Hi, Hi guys. Uh, welcome finally to Vienna. Uh, Thank you. I've met you a lot by now. Can um, you introduce yourself? Yeah, it's Michael from as the guys know me quite well. Do we? Yeah, I think you do. Um, can you just tell me what's been the highlight of your journey? Sorry, but nobody else does, maybe. Okay. <laughs> MikeFromEasyCars.com <laughs> I'm Mitchell Berger. Was, was that so hard? No. Okay. <laughs> It's about the artists. Okay. Okay. So, uh, what's been the highlight of your journey here to Vienna? It's, do you know what? It's been the most amazing few months ever since, well, before we were announced. It's just been incredible. It's been a whirlwind of just pure joy for us. It's been an incredible amount of hard work, but there's never been a point where, you know, woke up and said, oh, I don't want to do it today. It's just been so incredible. Um, and I'm so glad we're here now. We're so excited about what we're doing. It's just been a whirlwind. We're, you know, we're still in love <laughs> with it. Yeah, it's just been, actually, the whole journey has been really inspiring. And I think that we really feed off uh, the enthusiasm and the passion that Eurovision fans have because they're just, just so enthusiastic people and you can't help but, you know, feel that energy and you just want to go out there and do the best that you can do to, to make them proud because they're such an amazing, they're just the, the best fans in the world, so, yeah. Okay, next question. Is Alistair, Hi guys, Alistair Birch from SBS Radio in Australia. Hello. I have a question for you, Alex. Um, yeah. I understand that uh, on the side you're also a teacher of little children. I am. How do you teach them about Europe and does Eurovision help? Uh, well, I'm, I'm a, a music teacher, so we, we do often look at music around the world. Um, when I get back from Eurovision, I'll have more of an excuse to uh, talk about especially the music of Europe. We did do a very, very brief lesson on Eurovision before we left, um, and luckily we're actually able to do a performance in the school for them, which was fantastic, so they all dressed up and had a Eurovision day. Like 300 tiny children waving flags, and it was the great. Eurovision fans of the future, it was really cute. And at a press conference as well, it was, <laughs> that was gruelling as well, wasn't it? <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it's been, it's been great for them as well, it's been great for the school, and um, yeah, certainly will be some Eurovision lessons after this experience, definitely. Thank you. Alright, yes sir, in the, in the back room. Thank you, Paul Jordan from the UK. Hi guys. Congratulations on your rehearsal. 
Um, I've got a question for Helen, or Guy Freeman, as you're the lady. I could be a different guy, loving, loving the one. <laughs> um, when it comes, I wonder if you could just tell me a little bit about how the UK song was chosen. When it came to Electro Velvet, did you have a certain idea of the sort of song you wanted, or did you have like, an open mind in terms of what you were looking for? Uh, we, had a, we had a very open mind. I think um, there's no set formula to Eurovision, to, to winning Eurovision. Um, and when you look at the songs that have won in recent years, they're all, they've all mostly charted really, really well. When you look at last year, we had such a different, there was such a different load of genres in there. You look at the Common Minutes, and that was sort of more of a country uh, vibe. So it was, it kind of like opened everything up again. So for us, um, we wanted to, to give the opportunity, because there are so many people who are passionate about it, and have real strong views, and, and, and are very talented. So we wanted to open up to the public, which is why we did the public submission process. So we opened that up and anyone could send in a video of the artist and the song together. Uh, we were also speaking to other um, record companies and music industry people. And at the end of the day with these guys, it came down to, well it came down to a number of things, the chemistry between them. The song, the song's an earworm. I mean, it just stays in there. And we obviously had panel for a shortlisting and stuff, but that's the one that kept coming back that you just kept thinking. And no matter how many times I listen to it, and still listen to it, um, it just makes you smile. And I guess also with it being the 60th anniversary and a party year, we kind of thought, right, let's do a party song. It's upbeat, it's, it's fun. So there we go, that's how we got there. Uh, yes, gentlemen, would be great. Um, Hello, Alex. Uh, Hello. Yeah, uh, Jonathan Curden, the United Kingdom Independent Radio. We've heard all about the singing, uh, but now what about the dancing? Because obviously your video features a cast of probably hundreds, but you're only allowed six on stage. So how did you go about creating the stage dance routine? Good question, that one. So, yeah, I mean, what we had to look at is we had to be very, very clever about our staging and also about our choreography to give something that, as well as obviously the song, which is fantastic, to have something that goes along with it that's also visually striking, uh, but also in keeping with that theme of the, the old with the old swing and then the modern with, with you know, the, the bits and the bass and how it was all upgraded. And I think we've achieved that balance with the stage show and I think it's, it has got that in it and uh, we're really, really pleased with it. Thank you for your question. Okay, and uh, Simon from Poland. <laughs> yes, hi, I'm Simon, Poland, Radio Slater. I have a question to head of the location. Hi. I think it's you. There is a beautiful concept in the English uh, uh, fair play. And I'm referring to last UK's votes. Because in televoting we had one country, uh, which, we, which won, and actually all five members of your jury put the same country as the last one. Did they vote independently, or do you think the televoting should uh, limit or rather eliminate uh, televoting? Uh, the, the jury voting should eliminate televoting or uh, should really work independently? Oh, that's a tough one, because now you're getting on to the rules and regulations. So, um, I think with with that, there are ways where it does mean whoever votes, there is still a vote will count. We never want it to feel like someone's vote doesn't count. Um, I would have to go back to all my, my rules and regulations for that, I'm afraid. I can't give you a, a full-on answer. Yeah. No. Yeah, no, yeah, I agree. Okay, yeah. The rules and regulations, like, in such detail, it's a bit, uh, a bit much to ask, really, I think, at this point here, right now. <coughs> All right, um, I'm going to do one last question. Yes, sir, with the... Uh, and, 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 and all my all my affection and love to you, my yeah. colleague. Okay, come on now, please. Don't, don't hold against me. All right, cool. Hi, I'm Dean. I'm from Rhythm Zone magazine in the UK. Hi. Uh, hi, this is a question for Electro Velvet. Uh, you were at the 60th uh, anniversary concert in London and performed there. Obviously, you met a lot of people who have been on the Eurovision stage already. Did you get any advice from them? We did. Um... We've met uh, Brotherhood of Man and Conchita, and uh, we've had, I'm not at the 60th, but we also had a video message from Lulu. 
and absolutely every past contestant we met has given us exactly the same advice, which is just to have fun. And um, I think we're really lucky that our song is fun. And that's what we intend to do, because I think, you know, when you're having fun on stage, it, it will show you. So we are going to be working incredibly hard, but we're not going to forget that, you know, it's all about entertainment and having fun. So we're going to try our best to follow that advice, and so far we have been, and we've had a great time. And the fact it's contagious, you know, hopefully we can share all that with you as well. I was just going to say, everybody should be following that video, absolutely, everybody. Okay, so thank you very much, United Kingdom, for your timing.